Thank you. Uh, <coughs> thank you. Uh, I'm Masahiro Sato from Ibaraki University in Japan. And uh, yeah, first of all, I would like to thank organizer for uh, giving me this nice opportunity to show our recent theoretical result. And uh, today I'd like to talk about uh, uh, ultra fast spin tronics uh, by using the topological laser. Here, topological laser means the uh, uh, so called vortex spin, and uh, uh, soon later I will show the definition of the vortex spin. And uh, the collaborator of this study is the Hiroyuki, uh, Hiroyuki Fujita, uh, who is a nice PhD student in the University of Tokyo. And the uh, contents of this talk uh, is, uh, is in the, this paper, so if you're interested in uh, our uh, result, so uh, please check uh, this paper, okay. And uh, yeah, this is the uh, outline of this talk. Uh, first, uh, I shortly uh, uh, explained uh, my research, my interest, recent interest as a self-introduction. Mm -hmm. Uh, with the short introduction to the laser science, and uh, then uh, we turn to our target uh, vortex beam, or uh, which also called op optical vortex. Uh, the, the, the these two terminologies uh, uh, has the same same uh, 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 meaning, uh, a kind of the uh, singular laser. And uh, after explanation of the, this uh, uh, vortex beam, then uh, we turn to the, our uh, its theoretical result. Uh, which consists of two parts. Uh, one, uh, uh, first one is the uh, effect of the heating uh, due to the, this vortex beam, and the second part is the uh, uh, ultra fast dynamics driven by the uh, more low frequency terahertz uh, vortex beam. Okay. And uh, finally, I summarize our result. Let's start. And uh, yeah, uh, recent in recent year, we we have studied uh, uh, two uh, topics. One is the thermal uh, uh, phenomena, thermal, uh, typically thermal transport, and uh, another is the laser-driven phenomena. Okay. And uh, for example, in terms of the, this uh, first topic, uh, we recently uh, studied the uh, spin-on spin current uh, uh, in the quasi one dimensional uh, magnet strontium kappa oxide uh, by using the spin Zeebeck effect experimental setup. And uh, yeah, uh, uh, result of the, this uh, uh, study uh, has been already yeah, uh, nicely explained by uh, Professor A. Saito uh, in the first day of the, this workshop. So uh, I skip uh, the detail. But and uh, so for today's talk, I will focus on the, uh, the this second topic, uh, laser-driven phenomena, ultra-fast phenomena, okay? And, uh, you know, in the recent years, uh, the laser science has largely developed, has been largely developed. Uh, uh, this cartoon showed uh, uh, several applications of the laser uh, as a function of the frequency, okay? And uh, in this workshop, for example, the, uh, there are very uh, many, many interesting talk uh, related to the uh, magnetic resonance, such as uh, ESR or uh, NMR, and the foods typical uh, 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 frequency is in the, this region, megahertz or gigahertz, you know. And but uh, in this talk, uh, we foc I, I would like to focus on the more high frequency laser, uh, typically terahertz or petahertz region. Okay, and. Uh, Mm, particularly, uh, the recently, the uh, technique of the terahertz laser uh, has been uh, rapidly developed, and uh, uh, the uh, this uh, 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 energy scale is interesting since the uh, the uh, energy scale of the terahertz hot photons uh, comparable with the uh, mm, several kind of the excitation in the solid. Uh, magnetic excitation in the antiferromagnet and the phonons and the superconducting gap. So uh, we can naively expect by using this terahertz laser, uh, uh, new uh, laser-driven phenomena can occur. And uh, uh, here uh, I, I would like to stress only one uh, big advantage of the laser-driven phenomena. 
uh, namely the uh, ultra fast property of the, this uh, laser driven phenomenon, namely the frequency of the laser is very, very, very high compared to the uh, uh, typical frequency in the electronics. So typically picosecond or femtosecond. So or, or in principle, it is possible to uh, perform the ultra fast control of the ma many kind of physical control. And uh, this uh, simple uh, figure showed uh, our setup of, of this talk. Uh, yeah, set our setup is very simple. Uh, the we apply the laser to uh, the uh, uh, many kind of material. And uh, choosing uh, the kind of the laser or materials, uh, we have recently predicted several kind of the new laser driven phenomena like this. And uh, today's talk, I focus on the uh, application of the vortex field, okay? Namely, that we uh, cleverly uh, tune the uh, kind of the laser, okay? Uh, which is a vortex beam. And, okay. Then uh, I'd like to uh, turn to the explanation of the vortex beam or optical vortex. Okay. <coughs> and uh, what is a vortex uh, beam? Uh, the definition is very simple. Uh, vortex beam is a laser carrying uh, orbital angular momentum. Okay. And uh, this uh, laser is first proposed by the uh, Professor Allen and uh, collaborator. And uh, here we note uh, that this uh, concept of the orbital angular momentum is not uh, uh, equal to the uh, spin of photons. Namely, spin of photon is the, you know, the left and right-handed circular polarization, okay? And uh, uh, here, uh, the uh, orbital angular momentum is not uh, the uh, circular polarization of the right. Uh, this cartoon uh, showed the uh, image of the uh, spin and the orbital angular momentum of the light. And uh, due to the uh, presence of the, this orbital angular momentum, so uh, total angular momentum of the photon uh, is given by the sum of the, uh, the spin and the orbital angular, angular momentum, like the electron orbit in the atom. Okay? And uh, yeah, this is a simple definition. And uh, more mathematically, uh, the vortex beam uh, is defined by the a solution of the Maxwell equation. Okay, uh, here we consider the uh, uh, propagating electromagnetic wave around the uh, cylinder axis, z-axis, and uh, by solving this uh, simple Maxwell equation, we get uh, the uh, so-called Raguel Gaussian model, like this. And, uh, but uh, the detail uh, of the this equation is not important. So uh, this uh, 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 Langer Gaussian model, uh, uh, Langer Gaussian model is the, uh, another name of the optical vortex. Okay? And uh, this equation uh, uh, only ha has only the three e important parameter. Uh, uh, two of three is the two integer m and p here or uh, here. And uh, M is nothing but the uh, uh, quantum number of uh, orbital angular momentum, namely the uh, orbital angular momentum uh, is given by H bar times integer M. Okay? And uh, here, another important parameter is W, uh, which is called waste. Uh, roughly speaking, this waste uh, corresponds to the size of vortex beam in at the focal plane. And the uh, final uh, important uh, parameter is integer p. And the p is related to the uh, node or, uh, of the intensity of the of, uh, vortex beam around the uh, uh, radial direction. Okay, and uh, yeah, this is the uh, uh, intensity as a function of the uh, radial coordinate law. And the uh, most important point of the uh, intensity profile is that uh, the uh, node uh, always appear at the center of the vortex beam. And uh, this is uh, very similar to the uh, uh, orbit in the uh, hydrogen atom. Namely, the, uh, you know, the, uh, only, only in the S-wave uh, orbit, uh, we have a finite uh, 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 electron um, density probability, 
uh, at the center of atom, <laughs> but uh, uh, in the case uh, of the other uh, electron orbits, such as a uh, phi or a b or a f orbit, in that case, the, uh, the center of atom, uh, the uh, uh, zeros appear in, in the case of uh, the atom. Uh, similarly to the case at case of atom, uh, the, uh, in the case of vortex beam, we have uh, uh, always uh, zeros uh, occur at the center of uh, vortex beam because uh, to avoid the singularity of the uh, angular dependence of the, this function, okay? Yeah, uh, as a result of the, this uh, the singularity, it, uh, 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 this is the uh, 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 intensity profile of the uh, vortex beam at the focal plane. Uh, the uh, w one important uh, characteristic property of the vortex, vortex is that the uh, vort intensity of the vortex beam always has uh, this ring structure. Okay, namely the, as I said, uh, the center of vortex beam has a zero or intensity. Okay, and uh, if we tune the value of the integer p we have a, a single, double, and a triple uh, ring structure. Okay, and uh, this is uh, uh, the uh, result of the standard Gaussian um, laser beam. Uh, in this case, you know that uh, the at the center, uh, we have a maximum value of the intensity, okay? And these uh, two are quite uh, different. Okay, this is the one, one uh, characteristic nature of the vortex beam. And another point is that uh, the angular dependence of the uh, electromagnetic field. Uh, this is the uh, uh, time dependence of the uh, uh, electromagnetic uh, field uh, of the linearly polarized and the circularly polarized vortex beam. And the arrow uh, uh, at uh, each position um, denote uh, the direction and the strength of the electromagnetic field, okay? In the case of the Gaussian beam, you know the, uh, the in the all the position, at the all the position, uh, the direction of the electromagnetic field is same, like this. But uh, in the case of the vortex beam, uh, uh, depending on the angle value of pi, uh, the, uh, the direction of the electromagnetic field gradually changes like this, okay? This is the second part, uh, second uh, characteristic feature of the uh, vortex beam. And uh, this uh, angular dependence, uh, uh, yeah, comes from uh, the, the existence of the uh, orbital angular moment of the vortex beam. Okay, so yeah, please remember these two characteristic future of the uh, vortex beam. So yeah, actually, the fortunately, in, in at uh, in, uh, nowadays, and uh, we have uh, several kind of the. Uh, method uh, of the generating vortex beam like this, but uh, I'm a theorist, so I skip the detail of the uh, uh, this uh, method of generating vortex beam. Okay. Anyway, uh, many uh, method uh, has been already established. And uh, before going to uh, our theoretical result, uh, we uh, I would like to show only one application of the vortex beam. Uh, this is the experimental setup. The here we uh, apply the uh, very strong vortex beam to the uh, metallic plate, and uh, as a result uh, of the uh, application, uh, bipolarization occur, and as a result we have uh, uh, this circle-type uh, uh, trace. And as I said, uh, the uh, vortex beam has a, a ring type intensity structure. Uh, then uh, the we have uh, 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 this small needle uh, uh, if we apply uh, optical vortex to the metallic uh, plate. Okay, and uh, interestingly, uh, and uh, this is a uh, result of the usual Gaussian circular polarized laser a result of the Gaussian beam, and uh, in this case, uh, we have no needle uh, at the center of the distress. Uh, uh, okay, and uh, interestingly, the if we focus on the this uh, needle, or if uh, and uh, if we apply the uh, vortex beam with positive orbital angular momentum, 
then uh, this needle has a, a clockwise spiral structure. And uh, if we apply the uh, vortex beam with negative orbital angular momentum, then we have an anti-clockwise uh, spiral structure. Okay. So, yes? This color scale? You, you mean th this one? This, this uh, yeah, uh, the thi thi this, this region or uh, the intensity is strong enough. Yeah, uh, application of the vortex beam, uh, the some of the metal is bipolar. Then uh, we have uh, this uh, uh, spatial structure. But uh, as I said, the center of the uh, vortex beam has no intensity. Okay. And uh, yeah, uh, from this result, we can say one important message, this experiment uh, uh, succeeded in uh, printing of the sign of the orbital angular momentum onto the material. So here material corresponds to the, this metal. So oh here uh, I want to uh, propose the microscopic version of the, this printing, namely Maybe this is a, uh, yeah, relatively short single pulse result. Yeah. And uh, the frequency of the, this vortex beam is maybe the visible range. So we can uh, almost freely tune the uh, strength of the intensity. Okay, so uh, the, yeah, motivated by, motivated by the, this uh, experimental result, uh, here, I want to propose a new way of the printing uh, the information of the ob o orbital angular momentum uh, onto a more microscopic degrees of freedom, uh, especially electron spin in solid. Okay. So, uh, next step is uh, we should consider the uh, uh, proper magnet uh, for the application of vortex beam. Okay. And uh, as I said, the, the characteristic of the vortex beam is a spatial profile, spatial structure, non-uniform structure, okay? So, uh, uh, naively, I guess the target material has also such a spatial structure, okay? So, uh, here, uh, we uh, we here consider the uh, uh, chiral magnet. You know, the uh, in this magnet uh, has a uh, topological defect, uh, such as a stami. And, uh, yeah, uh, here we consider the uh, typically, uh, typical chiral ferromagnet, uh, for example, P20 type alloy and uh, mangan uh, silicide, uh, uh, some kind of the multi-heroic material. And uh, this is a typical uh, magnetic phase diagram of this uh, chiral ferromagnet. Uh, temperature versus uh, the external magnetic field. And uh, in bulk system, we have a very small uh, scamium lattice, scamium crystal phase uh, around here. But uh, if we consider the uh, thin film uh, of the, this chiral magnet or the, this uh, scamium phase uh, expanded widely like this. And uh, yeah, uh, maybe uh, everyone will know the scamium is uh, defined by this cartoon. And uh, in this region, we have a uh, 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 scamion crystal structure uh, like this, uh, which scamion form the triangular lattice. Okay. And uh, yeah, for this material, uh, we have, we have uh, the corresponding uh, simple spin model. Uh, for or, or 2D thin film of the chiral uh, ferromagnet, uh, which Hamiltonian is given by this three term. 
Uh, first term is just uh, uh, Heisenberg time exchange coupling, and the second is Jarosinski Moria interaction, or, or Jarosinski Moria uh, 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 run along both x and y direction. And the final term is uh, 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 standard or Zeeman coupling uh, uh, between the external magnetic field and the spins. Okay? And uh, if we tune the magnetic field, uh, we have a spiral type uh, phase and the skarmion crystal phase and the ferromagnetic phase. This is a, 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 a numerical result of the Dick Hamiltonian. Okay? And uh, this phase diagram very consistent with the Dick experimental result. If we apply the ex uh, external magnetic field, we have helical, skarmion, and ferromagnetics. Okay, so using uh, this simple system, we can analyze the uh, effect of the vortex beam in this system. Okay? Yeah, 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 yeah. LLG equation. And, uh, but uh, before going to our uh, theoretical result, we have to uh, consider the uh, kind of mismatch between the chiral magnet uh, topological defect uh, uh, and the vortex beam. Uh, yeah, uh, you know the typical size of skarmion uh, is in the order of nanomet from nanometer to the micrometer. Okay? And uh, yeah, uh, usually the uh, diffraction limit of the laser is uh, uh, order of the wavelength, their wavelength. Lambda. So, uh, corresponding uh, laser uh, uh, whose uh, uh, focal uh, size uh, correspond to the size of skarmion is uh, the in the ultraviolet or, or, or visible uh, region. Okay, uh, because uh, whose uh, wavelength lambda is uh, disparate. Okay. Uh, on the other hand, if we consider the terahertz laser, uh, uh, whose uh, uh, wavelength lambda is much larger than the uh, typical size of skarmion. Okay? On the other hand, if we consider the typical time scale of spin dynamics in the magnet, you know the uh, uh, gigahertz, uh, uh, terahertz uh, uh, frequency is the typical time scale of the spin dynamics. But uh, the uh, this uh, uh, frequency of the ultraviolet or visible laser uh, uh, is the 10 to uh, yeah pet peta petahertz order like this. Okay, so it means uh, uh, for electron spin in the magnet, uh, the oscillation of the visible or ultraviolet laser uh, is too fast, namely the uh, spin cannot feel the oscillation of the this visible laser. And and uh, inversely, the frequency of terahertz laser uh, is uh, comparable to the <coughs> time scale of spin dynamics. So uh, we have to resolve uh, that this space-time mismatch between the magnet and the vortex spin. And uh, here we uh, propose two solutions. One is the uh, uh, application of the heating effect uh, driven by the uh, high-frequency laser. 